Hey everybody, it's time for another episode of The Kick Wits. Uh, on this episode, oh, whoa, wait a minute, ho, 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 let me slow down there. The show, the show where we highlight awesome crowdsourcing projects. Every episode we interview amazing creators and showcase their work. Uh, I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining, and I am joined by my co-host, Mike Kafis. On like this episode, oh All yeah, hey. Hey, sorry, I'm a little out of sorts. We had to do a lot of changeover, like, at the last minute, so my screens are, like, different and everything. Screw me up. Uh, I'm your host, Peter Bryant. Um, I already said that. On this episode of the Kickwits, we are talking with Ben Burns uh, Hello. of New Comic Games. Hey, Ben. Hi, how you doing? Hey, Ben. And he got a little insight to the background of all this. It was, it was uh, 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 as usual, YouTube was messing with me. Uh, anyway, New Comic Games has produced two board games, a card game, several different sets of dice and RPG supplements for first and second edition AD&D, fifth edition Call of Cthulhu, Paranoia, and top secret New World Order, which is important because that's what we're talking about on this episode. Um, we have, uh, Ben has a new uh, Kickstarter that, that's coming out for top secret New World Order. So, uh, so Ben, what is, what is this thing that you got coming out? Or that's that's, well, that's out sort of. Well, it's uh, it's on Kickstarter now. Uh, we're live. We're halfway through. Uh, it's already funded, and we're already past our first stretch goal. We're heading into our second one. Should hit it in the next day or two. Congratulations um, on funding so fast too. That's a good one. Yeah, it actually funded in three and a half hours. One of my fastest ever. So really pleased nice. with that. Uh, Anyway, it's called Operation Arctic Blast. Um, I don't know if you can throw up the cover or not. I know I sent it's, it to you. It's but... up. It's up. They can oh, see it. it. Oh, okay. I can't see it. That's part All of right. my fancy schmancy setup you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, um, yeah, it's a, uh, a uh, adventure module for um, uh, Top Secret New World Order, which is the brand new Top Secret version that just uh, got released by TSR earlier this year. Uh, it's a ton of fun to play. Uh, I've been running in a campaign, and um, I, I don't know what I say, you know, if you like James Bond or, you know, Jason Bourne or Mission Impossible or anything like that, it fits right into that uh, uh, line. So Yeah, you know, I've, I've uh, so I'm part of the TSR team, and, and I helped uh, demo this thing, pro the game, probably, I think, as much as a year before it was actually released, uh, I ran it at Gary Con uh, and at Gary Con and Total Con this yep. year. I was and, a play tester. Yeah, yeah, and I ran it at uh, I ran it at Total Con last year. Um, that's a great game. It's a lot of fun. It's got a neat. I like the dice mechanics. A neat dice mechanic. Um, but you now you did you did uh, a previous module to this one already. Now is this a sequel to that module or is it just your second one? Is it like a part two or is it just another module? Well, no, originally we were going to do a part two, but that one did so well, we actually combined that into one module, uh, okay. Operation Deep Freeze. And uh, so this is a second module. It can be run standalone or, you know, as a follow-up to the first. It, there's there's a little uh, tie-in between the okay. two, but uh, but that's pretty minimal. Okay. But I, but I would imagine that if it's if there's a little tie-in between them, then, um, then, then it would be easy for a, a game master who's running like a campaign. Uh, you know, with the same characters are going to be playing over and over again, and they're building. You know, they're probably doing stuff in between as well. I would imagine it's probably easy for him to build, or, uh, build for them to build this into the story, uh, or build yeah. the two modules together into one story. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And so that. And, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, did, does it? Is there now? Is there any way to tie this stuff into the the module that came with the game? The uh, uh, what is it, the Queen? White Queen. White Queen. Uh, yeah, actually, um, and when I wrote my first one, Deep Freeze, I did not realize White Queen was set in Latvia because Deep Freeze is set in Latvia also, just in a different oh, part of nice. Latvia. So you're going back there to start with, and uh, but it leads you on a, you know, you have to, to leave Latvia at the end of that one and, and go into part two, and you're traveling all over. So, um, but yeah, it's... Um, it's a great adventure, and uh, we're looking forward to getting it into people's hands. So, so. Uh, I gotta, I'm gonna ask you something, Ben. Before we go a little any deeper into the new module, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about um, your company and how how you guys got started? Okay, so we've been around for about three years now, and uh, I, you know, Chris, I've been playing role playing games and board games since I was a little kid, and uh, rewriting and writing my own stuff, uh, but. 
I actually run a Boy Scout troop also, and there's a game design merit badge. And so I had my boys do the game design merit badge, and they said, well, we'll do it if you will too. And so that's how I actually designed my first board game, which was Ultimate Dinosaur Fighting. Uh, and uh, everybody liked it so much. Uh, all my friends said, you got to kickstart this. So I did. It was successful. Uh, you know, not hugely successful. You know, it wasn't a uh, exploding kittens or anything, but right, it right. did well enough to get it produced and out the door. And we've actually sold out of it now and uh, are looking to a, a second edition now. But that's how it all kind of got started. So, congratulations. Nice. Hey, uh, where where are you uh, from? I'm in, uh, located in Dallas, Texas. So. Dallas, Texas, and where's your what's your troop? Uh, troop two six three. That, so. I'm a, my sons are affiliated with Troop eighty seven in Baltimore. So just ah, excellent. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Mike's a boy scout. I, but, I am a son of a of a uh, Eagle Scout as well. I mean, I'm the father of an Eagle Scout. Jesus. Oh, my oh, son's working that's... on his Eagle project now. So well, good luck. <laughs> I was gonna say, but Bud's an Eagle Scout, but no, no, <laughs> not my father. <laughs> So what is it, Ian? I guess Ian's a Eagle Scout, Ian, then, right? Ian has his Eagle, and uh, when I talked to late, recently, I just talked to uh, Aaron, who is 17, and he's going to age out in December. And I said, "Are, are you going to do it or not?" You know, he's really close, uh, but he also plays football in high school. So I said, "You're going to have a tough, uh, you know, first uh, semester," and he said he really wants to give it a, give it a shot. So we're going to go nice. for it. Well, good luck there. Yeah, luck, thank luckily, you. my son doesn't have the age out issue, so. Uh, uh, I run a special needs only troop, so okay, good. They, nice. they got rid of the age limit for us. So it's congratulations. Kind of That's good. I'm glad they did that. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So, so you designed, um, so you designed your first game, and it, it kickstarted fairly well. Um, now, from what I have found, and I, I've done, I did one Kickstarter. I'm working on my second one coming up, um, and, and I've been doing a lot of reading on what makes a successful Kickstarter. And from everything I can tell and from, like, what everybody – everything that I have read, uh, it's really about building community. Like, that is your number one goal to, to launching successful Kickstarters is to have a, a community that you build. you find absolutely. that to be true? Yeah, okay. ab absolutely. You know, of course, there, there's other ways to do it if you have – but having a following, I mean – Going back to exploding kittens, uh, even though I use an ex example of a failed Kickstarter when when ask, people ask me to talk about Kickstarters, um, but uh, you know, Oatmeal has how many million followers? So he launches right. a Kickstarter and makes a million dollars in a day. You know, right. that's mm -hmm. yeah, and that's an example of a community of followers. So, um, but yeah, I, I have a nice community. I, I've worked it up. I started going to North Texas RPG Con. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that one or not. I am. But... I've never been, but I've heard some amazingly oh good my gosh, things about that convention. I mean, when you can get a chance to sit down with Merle Rasmussen, who wrote Top Secret, and yeah. just sit there and chat with him over like a Merle. beer or something, you know, for an hour, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, it, it's great. It's that's, a, that's a the fantastic whole... con. So. That's, the, that's the magic of a con right there. Right there, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, I've made so many friends there. I've been going for 10 years, and uh, it, it helps you build a community right there just doing that. So, And then, you know, being successful with your Kickstarters, getting them out on time, that's key. Then people are more willing to back you the second time and the third time. You know, I've done yeah. this is my 14th Kickstarter that's successful. Holy moly. Yeah, and so – um, you know, I have a I have a good reputation of getting things out on time. I've had. So, go so ahead. I would say I would say that I would say that if if anyone's you know watching us that's not familiar with you, I mean that that is a, a testament to to your work. You know your work ethic. You, you know because there's been a lot of question lately about Kickstarters. You know people not wanting to back them or people. Ex I've I've seen a lot of comments where it's like yes, yeah, so why don't back Kickstarters anymore because you know I put money in and, and it you know it tanked or I never saw anything or I had to wait four years to get it. Uh, and there is a lot of that goes on, and I can understand totally understand why people would be leery of backing someone they don't know or putting money into something that's kind of eh, could happen, might not. But you know, if you've launched fourteen successful ones, I I think you can trust you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. I, I think reputation is is huge in the Kickstarter. You know, there are people who've taken the money and run, and it puts a bad name on all you know Kickstarter creators. Um, right. But uh, you know, it's. It is what it is. Unfortunately, it's a it's a place. Some people, if they are looking to scam people, they can do that. Uh, but 
Uh, I'm not here to do that. I'm here for the long run. It's something I want to be doing 20 years from now, and um, I'm having a great time doing it. So, excellent. Well, well, tell us about tell us about Arctic Blast. Like, what what is this adventure that you have for us? <laughs> well, uh, I actually didn't write this one. Uh, this was written by uh, Gary Van Binsbergen. And uh, he's uh, kind of, we've become friends over the last few years. We're do, working on a lot of different products together. We got a D&D 5th edition uh, world coming out next year, along with a full campaign book. But he wrote this adventure, and uh, originally TSR had looked at, at publishing it, but uh, I jumped in there. And <laughs> I don't know if I stole it from him or not, but <laughs> anyway, uh, I offered to publish it. And so he, he jumped on board with me, and... Uh, I, I love it. It's a great adventure. Uh, you can see on the cover, that's the bad guy. His code name's uh, Shimura. And um, it, it takes you all across the world. He's a international arms dealer. And uh, so you, uh, you know, you're, you're on the ocean. You're in, obviously, a very cold, temperate area. I don't want to give too much away about what's going oh, yeah. on in the module. No spoilers, no spoilers. But, but we're, yeah. so we're going after a gun dealer. Yeah. Well, weapons, then... weapons dealer. Weapons dealer, yeah. Right. Uh, so, and then uh, you know, uh, uh, finally on to tropical islands and uh, you know massive resorts. So, anyway, but uh, very you know very deadly. But you know, top secret is a deadly game. Uh, Holy crap! So, it is. Yeah, I mean, you know, shooting shooting guns at people, especially if you get the drop on them, it's just like insta kill. So, uh, you really playing cautiously and you know and i think that fits actually more real life you know if you can sneak up behind somebody and get a good shot off chances are you're going to kill them so right yeah. and and you know when i've run top secret with with the stuff that that i've done i had them spend the vast majority of their time researching hacking into computers um you know questioning people they they spent very little time in, in combat because i knew how deadly combat was so mm -hmm. i kind of i kept them out of it until like the you know it was really one of those climactic type things where they they played for like three hours before anything like before a bullet was fired yeah and and you know that's a that's a good way to to approach you know, but uh, I don't know. I, I like throwing a little bit of excitement early on, you know, uh, but give them an advantage over the bad guys so they can get a feel right. for their characters. Uh, a nice car chase scene or something like that sure. is always fun. Um, but uh, so, uh, but yeah, you have to be careful if you put in too many gun battles, your character, you know, you'll spend most of your time rolling up new characters. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the, yeah, the, the damage for like a damage for an assault rifle at close range is dead. Uh, right. Yeah, it's just yeah. dead. Just right. yeah, just dead. <laughs> <laughs> fatal. Right. Um, <laughs> sniper rifles, even at long range, it's just fatal. So. Just fatal. Good lord. Okay, so um, so you, you've got this great story. We're chasing this this arm, arms dealer all over the place. Um, lots of twists and turns. Are there, is oh, there yeah. is, now are there places where the people can screw up and go wrong, like go the wrong direction and have to correct course? Uh, I don't know about that so much. Um. You know, Gary could probably answer that question more. <laughs> As a matter of right. fact, let me IM him and see see what he can say. He was going to join us today, but he, uh, unfortunately, maybe, technical it, <laughs> difficulty. Maybe in the uh, chat room, uh, because I, I'm sure his wife Sherry is not an avid gamer, probably, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's probably so, him um, in the chat room. So, Gary, if you're uh, in the chat room, uh, answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> So he's actually tapping me a message right now, but okay. uh, <laughs> uh, That's fine. there are, are places you can definitely screw up and uh, uh, it can it can bite you and have uh, effects on your performance later in the adventure. So things you do early on can help you or hurt you later in the adventure. So that's uh, always good. So. You know, that's something I've seen in some adventures. You know, you don't see it all the time. You don't see I don't think you see it enough where the party has a challenge something they have to do and or something that they could do like like they say you know they might say in the in the adventure if they research this is what they can find on a successful role and this is where it will help them later or it will help them later and then when you get down into the module you get a little deeper in the module say if they researched tell them this, this now yeah. you don't see enough of that and i i think that's great you know i i love seeing stuff like that um, so actually, Gary just he says uh, I covered the basis for the module going wrong, got it covered, so you can't get too far off track. So okay, good, good, all right, all right. good. But, so not not railroaded, but 
Maybe some uh, maybe some guardrails. Yeah. Keep... <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Cool. Uh, Very yeah. Cool. Gary joined us in the chat now. He's 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 in there. So. Okay. All right. Fantastic. I... All right. So now I, I'm seeing some some really cool stretch goals for this. So you've got um, I think I think one of your stretch goals was extra art. Did you have you hit that one yet? Uh, no, no, that's a, a later one. So a later right one. now okay. we we hit the uh, professional cartographer, so he's already on board. Oh, you and did that. And uh, so that one's done. And then I prefer actually full color books inside right. and out. Of mm. course, they're more expensive to print. So that's Ooh. the <laughs> yeah. so that's the next stretch goal. And we're only like five hundred dollars from that. So I expect nice. to get that in a day or two. Oh. And then the one after that will be uh, extra art. And then I have a surprise one after that. But uh, so for like uh, right now, we're going to keep that one uh, under wraps until we get closer to the. Uh, to the last one shown so yeah gary's okay. saying that the um setting is there and open ended so that the character interactions are are free flowing it looks like there's you know he's saying that there's no railroading which i love because if you can't as a as a game designer and a module writer if you can't write uh course corrections into your adventures then there's something wrong right yeah because you, I mean, players like, you know, so. Are we notorious just, for, fill in right, the blank. Right. When we, <laughs> when, we, when we build stuff at work, right, because we build stuff for soldiers, we're always like, you can't make it soldier proof. You do your best to make it soldier proof, but you can't. You, you know, you, you can hand an anvil to a, to a soldier who's naked in the desert and he could break it in five minutes, right? Uh, and a module, you, you hand a module to a player and he can break it in 30 yeah. seconds. <laughs> So, so it's good that just of course you know course correction. That's excellent. Yeah, and I actually had that uh, on my last uh, previous Call of Cthulhu module. I had this one little back door <laughs> that I had there, and it was really for the people to leave the module. And of course, the players found it, <laughs> uh, <right. laughs> you know, in a play test. And I was like, all right, I gotta hide that better. <laughs> so, right. But yeah. <laughs> all right. Now it's, you were saying in your note, in your notes you have uh, it says our, our your last book uh, release Star uh, Star on the Shore was yeah, on the one shore. of only four finalists in the Three Castles RPG Award. What's that? Because that that sounds like sounds like you you know you know what you're doing. So what what is that what is that award? Uh, so the Three Castles is uh, given out by the North Texas RPG Con, and uh, they take entries um, for a year. You know, it's um, I think you have to have it out before October 1st until the next October 1st. So you have one year you can submit a, uh, uh, a RPG book or supplement or something along the lines of RPG. And then uh, it goes through a steering committee who will look at the 30 or 40 entries that they get and they can pick up to five finalists. They only picked four this last year. Uh, mm -hmm. I was one of those four finalists. Uh, nice. Unfortunately, I didn't, didn't win. Uh, Greg Gillespie won with his uh, wonderful uh, adventure he had written, but uh, I was very proud of uh, Star on the Shore. So, uh, oh, no. to be a finalist in something like that is, is an award sure. all in, in in and of itself. We we oh. are Parsec Award uh, nominees. Yes, <laughs> yes, we were nominated for Parsec, which is that's a that's an yeah. honor. It's an honor. Uh, the uh, the judges for North Texas, uh, for the Three Castles are guys like Frank Mincer or right. uh, Tim Cask. Uh, you know, uh, I think Merle might have even been a judge at one point. You know, just mm -hmm. all you know, uh, who's who of uh, uh, old role playing game uh, aficionados, if you want to say. I've met all but, these gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> all these gentlemen, they're great guys, and yeah, I'm, fr uh, I'm friends with all of them actually. <laughs> yeah, they're, all, they're so, all good guys. So anyway. I, Cool. And um, so, so how long have you been? Did you? I, I'm assuming that you played the original Top Secret. Uh, oh, back, yeah. The, the original back in the day Top Secret. Oh, yeah. I've played uh, Top Secret. I played Top Secret SI. And then I've had a chance to play this one with Merle DMing, which was really awesome. <laughs> right. So, uh, and, um, um, and then I've, uh, you know, just finished playing through White Queen. Uh, a friend of mine went to DM it, so I couldn't even look at the module. I'm sitting there writing Deep Freeze. I kind of want to look at their White Queen to to follow the same format for characters and things like that, you know, right. uh, for NPCs. And I can't even open the book and look at it. Cause, but we finished it now, um, and then I'm actually going to start running my uh, last one, Deep Freeze, uh, come Sunday. 
So All right. uh, it'll be the final play test on that. I've run it once, but it was using the old SI rules, not these. So I've got everything converted over now, and I'm ready to give it a shot. I think it'll Fantastic. work just fine. <laughs> so pretty happy Good. with that. So one of the things that I've noticed uh, from from the original from well not from the original top seeker but from the from the core rules that came out the new world order rules that came out um they had some sample npcs in it but one of the things that that i would like to see more of uh would be some more npcs some more examples uh of of npcs and maybe some more equipment and gun stuff do these books have uh do you have like quite a few npcs like could i could i mine these for those things if if i wanted to <laughs> well yeah of course there'll be the npcs for the people who you encounter uh in uh both deep freeze and arctic blast uh and there'll be a variety of those guys as well as some new equipment and uh we're gonna try to do a few new weapons uh of course you know tsr has to approve everything that goes into our book since we're licensed through them. So, right. uh, but we'll see how it comes out. Okay. So. All right. Uh, well that, that's good. Cause I, I really, I mean like if you could throw a few extras in there, that would be cool too. If you want yeah. just you know, <laughs> a few just extra if he's yeah. just for fun. Just uh, yeah. You know, and just, actually, Hey, if they, if they mess up, here's some cops and maybe <laughs> some, you know, and of course, uh, you know, there'll be police interactions. Uh, of course, right. as any uh, spy is running around shooting at people, the police are going to take notice. So, right. You know, I mean, you could even like say, hey, if they get in trouble, they need to meet this mechanic. You know, a mechanic would be nice. Yeah, to have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. Uh, but they right, put cool. quite a few NPCs in the base role. So I, I've, I've used those guys. They're, they're good. All right. Anyway. Fantastic. Um, all right. And then, uh, so. What would be the, the – the, how can I put this? What would be the coolest part – without giving any spoilers away, what would be the coolest part? I mean you can even just say it in general terms, the coolest part of this module. Is is it being in the cold environment? Um, is there something that happens in there that is – that because I mean it is named Arctic, uh, Arctic Freeze. Right, Arctic, Arctic, I'm sorry, Blast. Arctic Blast. Yeah. Arctic Blast. Sorry, um, is is that sort of like the the really cool part of the module, or is there um, is there something else that, that that really like you thought was really neat? Well, uh, there's two parts I think are really neat. One is up in the Arctic area. Uh, yeah. I won't give away where, but uh, you know, uh, if you look at the cover. That should give right. you a good hint up in the top left <laughs> so, right. uh, of the cover. Um, okay. Uh, yep. Yep. And oh. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, having running gun battles with that is uh, really cool. And then also at the end, uh, there is a uh, uh, how can I put this? A pit of very dangerous animals. <laughs> so oh. that yeah. So you know, this is a um, James Bond. Uh, I don't know what to say, cliche, but a, tip, a typical uh, bad guy here that you're going to be running into, and nice. uh, this is on the front cover, and he's got all the nice stuff that goes along with that. So, anyway, all right. very cool, very cool. All right, well, I think you know, I mean, this is it's not like a big giant uh, a world to cover, so I think we've covered everything. Unless there's anything you know that you want to that I have not covered that you want to talk about um, for for this Kickstarter, other than um, I guess you know. Real quick, you know, we're, you know what we didn't do? We have not done uh, – what are the levels? What do people get uh, for, for backing and What levels can they back? Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, you can just do the base. Thank you. Uh, we, we prefer you not do that, <laughs> but <laughs> you can get the PDF version of it. Uh, I think that's uh, $10. And then, right. um, you know, actually, to be honest, I have to go and look. Uh, what, what the difference – I mean, I know what they are. I'm just not the – as sure on the exact price on each of them oh, but are, the second one is you can get the uh, soft cover version okay. uh, you know um it will be soft we don't have a hard cover version i don't think it'll be enough pages for that it'll okay. be between 80 and 100 and i really like it to be over 100 pages before we go to uh go to that yeah that um, makes sense and then um you can also pick up uh pdf for if you miss the deep freeze you can get both pdfs uh I think that one's twenty dollars to get both of those, which is right. a great deal. And then uh, you can also pick up both books if you missed the deep freeze one. And then nice. uh, there's levels for vendors to to jump in if vendors want to do it and give it to them at the you know retail cost. So nice. Anyway. Okay, that's good. That's actually really good. Um, I, now I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in a little bit. I know you said that you you'd rather than not uh, like pick a PDF rather than go <laughs> every higher. dollar counts, but you know. But but being that you've already 
being that you've already you know met your goal, I'm gonna say PDF is not the worst thing because to you that's you know that's just extra money for to help you make your product. No, no. I have no problem with the PDF. I was okay. talking about the one dollar level. So. Oh, the one dollar! Oh, yeah, don't do the one dollar. Come on, that's ridiculous. Don't do the one dollar. Nobody do that. No. Well, and some people like to do that just so they can keep tabs on it, right. and then usually at the end, uh, if they, you know, if it's coming out quick enough for them, they'll go ahead and upgrade it, right? Yeah. Or if okay. they decide they, you know, oh, okay, yeah, it's reached the goal I want, and I, I forgot to up it. You know, I can do it later. Or they just want to do the dollar so that their friends can see them doing it, you know. Right. So, yeah. yeah. You know. And and also there was been there's been a couple of backers here already. I'd like to point out Michael Wirt. Uh, thank you for backing. And uh, I was telling people, and I'll I will say this right now: if you support um, everything that Ben and uh, Gary have, are doing, please uh, share this video on your wall. Share it with your friends. Uh, and uh, let's get that colored version because uh, um, it's just only going to make it better. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah and so. The, so the artist is is, is great. Um, unfortunately, it's not the same artist. Um, the artist who did the cover uh, is a friend of mine named Evagini from Kiev, and he's done a lot of artwork for me. That's been really great. Uh, but he got a a new job as director of a virtual reality thing, so he's not going to have time to to do any more for me. Right. But uh, um, I have a, another friend who, oh no, I I can't find his name now. Uh, <laughs> he's a friend of mine, but his, you know, these guys from uh, the European countries, I have a hard time uh, uh, remembering exactly how their names pronounced. Yeah, how to pronounce yeah. his name. If I look at it, I can see it. But uh, anyway, um, but, but you got a new guy does, doing that, huh? Well, he did uh, the artwork for Deep Freeze, and it's really fantastic. And uh, so he's he's going to be doing the artwork for this one as well. And uh, it's it's he, I should be having some samples for it, and uh, really really soon. So he's already working on the artwork for it. So. And we have uh, also just so you know, we have uh, Raven Shadows uh, in Hey Raven <laughs> and Anthony Neil Emil Emil who are both double agent backers. So. Ah, excellent. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. So you, you've, you've definitely have fans, and um, it looks like this thing is, well, it's already a success, but it looks like it, it's only going to get better. So, And everyone here can help it make it get better, like I said, by just sharing it. Um, you don't know how much. And also, you may have bought it, but don't forget, you have friends. You have friends that are role players, right? <laughs> Christmas is just around the corner. You're going to blink, and you're going to be like, oh, my God, what am I going to get Pete for Christmas? Well, buy Pete this module because there you go. go. You know, Send it to me. It. That's fine. Um, <laughs> oh, and one, one more thing uh, before we go because uh, someone asked this, and it's a, good, it's a good question. It says, will a version be out uh, to DM at – oh, and my thing moved – at GameholeCon in November? Uh, actually – both, I expect both of these to be out by November. Deep Freeze will be out. I'm looking at September to October at the latest. And right. um, um, Gary has already, we're almost done with this one, uh, even though it, the Kickstarter's not even done. I ex really expect to be out by November, December at the very latest. So, um, unfortunately, so I maybe. won't make it to Game Hole Con. So, I I'm, I'm, was right on the verge of going, and then I went to... to to do it and they had sold out and i was like but ah. well hold on wait wait but but if you had the pd you might have the pdf done in time so he could he could download oh, yeah. it and and oh, he yeah. could run it all right so there yeah. you go uh i think that was uh that was uh michael wirt so so michael, michael you might have a pdf version that you can run yeah at game Hall yeah Hall, so yeah fantastic. and if you back it here especially if you get the hard or the you know soft cover the physical version of the book, you get the PDF with it here now in the Kickstarter. That's the big advantage right. over buying it later from my store. You only get the book. You don't get the PDF also. So Any, right. any chance that there will be a poster of the artwork of the cover? Um, well, as far as where? I, <laughs> I wasn't planning on doing a poster. That was so. a request from Raven. I'm just pissed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, don't, yeah. It's like a stretch goal, maybe. Yeah, um, maybe a you stretch never goal. Know. Do eight and a half by eleven or whatever. Stick it in the, with the book, like right little, on top. Uh, put it right in the envelope. Yeah, little yeah, uh, there you go. It, uh, centerfold action. Center there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All 
<laughs> it is an awesome cover. I really think it's great. Oh, by the way, the, the artist's name he's going to do is Alvaro. So uh, I remembered that, and I was I want to get that out there because he he does fantastic work. So great. All right, cool, fantastic. All right, well, let's give out some links. So uh, if you're not watching this on the Kickstarter page, uh, you can go to uh, go to Kickstarter, and I'm not going to talk this whole thing out, but it's basically if you either look up new comic games or Operation Arctic Blast. Uh, top secret NWO, you'll find it. It'll it'll pop right up. Uh, but there is a short link which is in the notes of this video. Uh, it's you know it's the it's the kck.st blah 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 blah. It's already down. It's down in the links. But you can also go to newcometgames.com. I'm sure you got a link there from uh, f from your uh, page. And yep. uh, and and I and you do have a Facebook page because I think I I hashtagged it or something and it, it popped up. So yeah. you got a new and comic a games there. Okay. And uh, you guys are on Twitter. I was po I was promoting you guys on Twitter as well. So yep. Twitter at New Comic <laughs> Games. So <laughs> yep. <laughs> you got to hit all the social medias these days, yes, right? Peter. Yes, Peter. All of the social medias. All of them. all of them. All, all social them. medias matter. Is that what you're All telling me? social media is matter. Yeah. matter. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. All right, excellent, excellent. I hate kicking. All right, and roll the outro. <laughs> right. All right. All right, Ben. Thanks. Thanks for coming on the show, and uh, I hope you. I hope you make a million dollars with this thing. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, we're halfway know. through, so we got a little bit of room to go. But. Right, right. All right. You only, you only got 990 some thousand. Yeah. Dollars to go, so. But anyway, right. but good luck. Good we're, luck. We're seriously. very happy with where it's at, and we just look forward to getting bigger. Thank you so much for having me on. Right. Absolutely. Thank All right. You, so here we, being here. here we go. Uh, you have just enjoyed the Kickwits. Uh, make sure to catch our regular live show on the Mythwits on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You can ask our guests questions. Or just banter with the other Mythfits if you miss our live show. Just like the people. There's some people in here bantering a little bit. They're not a regular audience. They'll, no, they'll get we love them. Up. And they're welcome yeah, anytime. You need to come back anytime. Watch the Mythwits. Monday nights. Um, it's, it's good. It's just like this. A lot of fun. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter as Mythwits. Check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media. Media and help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. Share this one. Help it out. Uh, Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows. That's right. We're part of TSR. Just like Ben is working with TSR. Uh, we're all family. Uh, Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And don't stir it. Always shaking, money penny. Always shaking. Make sure to check out aetherforge.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Thanks everybody for checking this out and if you're actually watching the credits and don't kid yourself, you want this thing, go back this puppy right now. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, oh, sorry. And Mike? Uh, doctor, no, 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 never say that again, Pete. Never. Never, never, never. never. Okay. Never do bond. <laughs> <laughs>